Alrighty, guys, how you doing? We're going to get into the last part of Chapter 8 here, 8.7. Now, if you're watching this and you're my student, you know why we skipped 8.6. It's because it's all about constructions and I don't teach constructions. Uh, if you're watching this from somebody else's flipped class or for your own benefit, um, there is no 8.6. I skipped that in my own class. So if you need help with BJU 8.6, um, uh, look around. Sorry. Um, here we are into coordinate geometry of circles. We're going to analyze circles now using um, the Cartesian system and coordinate planes. And it is weird. So put your weird hat on. <laughs> it's not hard necessarily, but it's weird. So let's, uh, let's get ready to dive into this together. All right, here we go. Remember that the uh, definition of a circle is a set of points, a given distance from a center. So circle C, um, is described as all the points that are our distance from C. Let me say that again in case you don't understand. A circle is the set of points that are all the radius R distance from the center C. That's a circle. Now, distance is uh, we've got a we've got an equation for distance, right, on a Cartesian system. Distance equals the square root of the difference between the x's plus uh, squared plus the difference in the y's squared. So this is a distance formula, and it's based on Pythagorean theorem, right? Change in x, change in y, x squared plus y squared equals the hypotenuse, or in this case, the distance squared, so you square root that. This is just a funny way of looking at Pythagorean's theorem, okay? So... This is a distance formula, and here we're looking at how far is it from the center to a point on the circle. Now, for the sake of um, this section, they're going to not use x and y for the center of the circle because otherwise it'd be confusing. You've got an x and a y here and an x and a y here. Which one is x? Which one is y? Which point am I? And you, you could get really turned around real easy. So um, they use hk as the center of the circle. I don't know why H and K. Uh, I don't know if there's a magical real reason be behind it. I just remember Hunter Killer, right? So I'm out here to kill this circle and I'm a Hunter Killer. H, K, and those are the coordinate points for the center of my circle. So um, the distance from the center of the circle to a point on it, it, the distance is the radius. So I'm just gonna change D to R in this equation, right? Uh, distance, no, I'm talking about the radius. And that is, keep everything else the same, but now for the second x, for x1 and y1, I said second, for x1 and y1, which are the center of the circle, we're going to replace them with h and k. Um, so x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, square root of the sum is the radius, h, k, x, y. All right. That gives us the length of the radius. Now, if you want to not have to have this whole thing under a radical, you can square the entire equation, right? So r squared, the square of the radius, is the difference in the x values, x minus h squared, plus the difference in the y values, y minus k squared. This looks very much like a Pythagorean theorem, right? Um, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. It's just rearranged a little bit. Okay, now that we have this, let's take a deep breath and take another step. That has derived for us now the standard form equation for a circle. Did you know you can graph a circle? Crazy. Yeah, r squared, the radius squared, equals x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared. Okay, that is the standard equation for a circle. We just derived it on the last slide. Let's see how we can use this. Here's one example of what you can do with this math. So I have my standard equation, and now they want me to write out the equation of a circle whose center is 0, 4, and whose radius is 3. So I have uh, the center of my circle, which remember is not x and y. We want a hunter killer that circle, hk. Um, I'm going to use 0 for h and 4 for k, and then r is 3, but remember the standard equation is r squared. So think about what this is in your mind. It's x minus 0, right, because that's the h quantity squared, y minus 4 quantity squared equals 3, that's the radius squared. 
So if we write all that out, um, I could leave it like this, and that's okay, but there's some really easy simplification steps that I should do. x minus 0 is just x, so let's just make that x squared. We're going to leave this the way it is, and then 3 squared is 9. So if I simplify it, this is the equation for a circle, um, the center of which is 0, 4, and the radius of which is 3. All right? Okay, let's do another example. Let's write an equation for this graphed circle. Now they've given us the circle, and uh, so I can look and find the center. Where is the center here? Can you read this with me? X, Y, right? So negative 2, 1. So H is negative 2 and K is 1. We're going to put those into the equation here in a minute. And then the radius, what's the radius? Well, it's, you can just kind of count, right? From here, it's 1, 2, or 1, 2, or... 1, 2, or 1, 2. So the radius is 2. So let's make our equation. Um, the radius is 2, so x minus negative 2. Keep your sign straight there, right? x minus h. The h is negative 2. x minus negative 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared. Don't, get, um, don't start saying plus 1. Because remember, the equation is x minus h and y minus k. Those signs can trip people up. This is y minus 1 squared equals 2 squared. Let's do some simplification. This becomes x plus 2, right? And then we can leave this one the way it is, and 2 squared is 4. So this is the equation for the, the standard equation for a circle that has been graphed. Okay? Uh, let's see what else we can do here. Okay, now. We are going to take several things that we've done and put them all together. Write the equation of a circle centered at negative 2, 9. That's h and k. Okay? And passing through point 3, negative 4. Now, we have not been given the radius. So I don't know what to enter for r. But I have been given a point and a center, and I can calculate the distance, which is going to be the value for r. So let's do that first. Here I have the radius, some unknown radius, is, and here's my equation for a circle with both points entered. Notice I don't have any x's or y's, h's or k's. I've got everything filled in. Um, here's my center, negative 2, negative 9. Sorry, negative 2, 9. Remember, these are subtraction statements, so all of your signs have to be watched very carefully. And here's my other point, 3, negative 4. 3, negative 4. So, all I have to do here is some math. 3 minus negative 2 becomes 3 plus 2. That's 5. 5 squared is, uh, is what all of that simplifies down to, right? And this negative 4 minus 9 is negative 13. So that's negative 13 squared. Now, when I square these, I, uh, I get 25 plus 169. And then when I add those two together, two together, I get 194. So my radius is the square root of 194. I'm just going to leave it as radical 94, radical 194. Okay, I'm not going to try to get that to a decimal answer. So now I can plug that in. This is r for my circle. I just calculated r. Now I'm going to, I'm going to take r and I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to use x and y because I'm talking about all the points for which this works, right? Um, x and y Here's my centers, h and k. I'll, all I have to do is simplify some signs here, and I'm done. So x minus negative 2 becomes x plus 2, so quantity squared, plus y minus 9, quantity squared, equals 194. Now why, here, it's radical 194. Why is it just 194? Because the equation, remember, is r squared. So when I square a radical, the radical goes away. So this is the final form of the equation of a circle that has a center of negative 2, 9 and a, another point on the circle of 3, negative 4. If you need to see that again, you can rewind the video and go through it again. Uh, we'll go through several examples like this, I'm sure, tomorrow in class. This is where it gets a little confusing. And you're going to say, wait a minute, Mr. Alley, I'm already confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> It gets worse. Here we go. Um, the equation of a circle can be written in an expanded form. Now, this whole time we've been happy leaving quantities squared. What happens if we're not happy with that anymore? Well, you know how to 
take a, a uh, two statement expression and square it, you FOIL, right? Remember FOIL? Oh, your plans have been FOILed. Yes. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to expand all of these quantity squareds and we're going to write this huge polynomial out of it. And then we're going to simplify as much as we can. And then we're going to say this works too. Okay. So follow me. X squared plus quantity Y plus three squared equals 13. That would have been fine last slide. Now we're going to blow it up a little bit and we're going to take this quantity squared term and we're going to actually square it. So remember FOIL first outer inner last been a while. Okay. So if you have y plus 3 times y plus 3, you're going to have y times y, which is y squared. You're going to have y times 3 and another y times 3, which you can combine 3y's plus 3y's gives you 6y's. Okay. And then you have 3 times 3, which is 9. So foiling this binomial just turns it into y squared plus 6y plus 9 equals 13. Now, what can I do? Well, I can't combine x squareds and y squareds and y's, but the 9 and the 13 I can combine. So I'm going to fire the 9, right? I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides of this equation, and I'm going to get him over here so that all of my just natural numbers wind up on this side of the equal sign. Okay, so x squared plus y squared plus 6y equals 4. That's another way of expressing the same exact thing as x squared plus the quantity y plus 3 squared equals 13. I like this better because it's easier to graph, but there will be times when you need it expanded. So there it is. Okay. Now this example only had us expand one term. This term x squared is just x squared. It's possible though that this is x minus 2 quantity squared plus y plus something quantity squared and you got to foil both and combine and it gets meh, but it's okay breathe we can do this together okay um, there is a method called completing the square that can be used to convert an equation to standard form so this is not standard form this is expanded form now how do you go back from here well you have to factor a binomial <laughs> there's two ways to do that you can use the quadratic method quadratic equation, or you can do this completing the square thing, which is really, really spiffy. A little confession, I uh, took geometry. I have taught geometry in the new edition of BJU's text. This is the first time I've seen this. I wish I had seen this before. This would have made my life a happier place. Let's move into it. <laughs> completing the square. Ready? Here we go. To complete the square of an expression, in the form of x squared plus bx, add the square of half of the coefficient of the linear term. Huh? So x squared plus bx, b is the coefficient of the linear term, of the straight line term, not the exponential term. We don't care about him. Of the linear term, the b. And it's called b, remember, even if you did the quadratic equation, this is still b, okay? Um, so b, half of b squared, b over 2 squared. Now, you're not going to write it this way. You're going to just do that math. But the number that you need is that number. Okay. Now, if you add the same number to both sides, you haven't changed the meaning of the expression. So I'm adding a number to this side, and I'm going to add it to the other side. Whatever it does to the other side is fine. Um, but I'm adding it to this side because it's going to make my uh, factoring much easier. I wish I knew how to do this before. This really, honestly, has changed my computational life. Here we go. So this is completing the square. Then from here, you would simplify and factor. Um, so let's do some of this. Okay, you ready? Big breath. Here we go. I've got an equation x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 5y equals 12. <laughs> You're welcome. And I want to know what is the center of that circle and what is its radius. So here's my expression. I'm going to just group my x's and my y's. That's all I did between here and here. I just grouped my x's and my y's. Now, these parentheses don't mean anything because all of this is just an addition sentence. But it's helping me think. X dumb, Y dumb, okay? That's what I'm doing. Now, 
I am going to do this completing the square thing. Here's my B term for the X's. Here's my B term for the Y's. What's half of four? Two. I'm going to rewrite this sentence, and I'm going to just take the X squared minus 4X, and I'm going to say plus 2 squared. Okay. All I did was say, what's half of that number? Write it there, put a square after it. Okay. I'm artificially inflating that side of the, of the uh, expression. But I'm going to do the same thing over here, because 2 squared is 4. Okay. Ah, balance, Daniel's son. Okay. Now, Y squared plus 5Y, what's half of 5? 5? 2.5. Well, let's not use decimals. 5 halves. Okay. 5 halves, right here, squared. Okay, cool. And so I have taken this statement and this statement, and I have added half of B, and I've written squared. And now over here, I have to actually add it, okay, so that we're still balanced. 5 halves is 2.5. 2.5 times 2.5 is 25. Or you could say 5 squared is 25. 2 squared is 4. Leave it as a fraction or turn it into decimal, whatever makes you happy. Now, I have to simplify this booger. This side of the equation is easy. Straight up addition. 12 plus 4 plus 2.5 squared, 25 fourths. Add that all up, and I get 22.25. That's just straight up addition. This side is binomial factoring. Do you remember binomial factoring from algebra? Probably not. Okay, here's how this works. I have x, and I have a perfect square. I write x and the perfect square. Because of the way I did this, this middle term factors himself away. This is so much easier than what I used to have to do. Um, so I don't care about this term. x squared, what's the perfect square? What's the square root of x squared? x. What's the square root of 2 squared? 2. Take the sine of the b term. Put it there. Done. <laughs> That's it. Here we go. y squared, what's the square root of y? What's the square root of 2 and a half squared? 2 and a half. Take the sine of the b term. Put it there. Done! Alrighty. So this is the standard expression. x minus k, uh, h plus y minus k equals r squared. So what's the center? Now, the silly people are going to say the center is 2, 2.5. But you're totally wrong. Why? Because the statement is x minus h, y minus k. So the h and the k are the opposite signs of what they are in these little statements, right? Because this is minus h. So what's h? It's not negative 2. It's 2. x minus what? Minus 2. y minus what? Well, this is y plus. So what am I minusing? A negative right? Negative, negative makes positive. Y minus negative 2.5. So HK is 2, negative 2.5. Hope you understood that. And then what's my radius? Well, this is R squared. So I need to square root 22.5, which is approximately 4.72. Okay, that's the big daddy example. I hope you understood it. If not, go back, watch it again, uh, stand on your head, drink some orange juice, <laughs> We'll go through it tomorrow. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments field below, and I'll do my best. Until then, uh, Jesus loves you, and so do I. God bless you.